Hello everyone and welcome to another SOLIDWORKS Tech Tip from Hawkridge Systems. This is Jacob Ames, Senior Applications Engineer, and in this video we'll be providing a quick look at using the Connection Element feature in the Structure System environment within SOLIDWORKS, along with a few use cases and a tutorial for creating and using your very own custom Connection Elements. If you're unfamiliar with the Structure System environment and you're on subscription with Hawkridge Systems, be sure to check out our update training for SOLIDWORKS 2020 provided by Solid Professor, which we've linked in the description below. There you'll find detailed tutorials on all the basics of the structure system environment. So what exactly is the purpose of the connection element feature? The main idea is to provide design flexibility in structure systems by allowing designers to easily create and place connecting hardware in place of welds. The new connection element feature allows for the rapid creation and placement of this type of hardware in a format similar to placing components through the design library. Begin by selecting the insert connection element command then choose the appropriate standard, type, and size from the available drop-down menus. You'll find the hierarchy here very similar to choosing weldment profiles, and much like weldment profiles, connection elements also support configurations. Once you've selected connection hardware, access the placement tab to control the positioning and size of the connection element. Begin by selecting a face, plane, or a sketch entity for the primary reference. Depending on the type of connection element and the parameters used to define it, this will result in a coincident, parallel, or concentric mate, the alignment of which can be flipped if required. The type of mate defined in the connection element will influence which types of geometry are suitable as reference selections. For example, the tertiary reference of this L-clip is defined as a coincident mate to the midplane of the component. As such, selecting the sketched line of the lower structural member is appropriate here. If required, the offset placement option can be enabled for both secondary and tertiary references to fine-tune the position. Additionally, the major dimensions of the connection element may be adjusted at the top of the property manager to create the perfect fit, and the default values can be restored at any time with a single click. Finally, you'll notice a cut scope field along with two end conditions at the bottom of the placement tab. Here you can select structural members to which you can propagate any cut features, such as poles, that have been defined in the connection element. This will ensure that these features are both present and properly aligned in the required structural members for assembly. Confirming the property manager and hiding the new connection element will allow us to verify this propagation. And of course, if the hardware is ever changed, these features will naturally be updated. To change a connection element, simply edit it as you would any other feature. While SOLIDWORKS 2022 includes a handful of sample connection elements to work with, much like weldment profiles, the true value in the feature comes from the ability to customize these connectors and create your own as required. First, it's important to note that connection elements have their own directory and file locations, which can be found in system options. Any custom connection elements should be created and stored outside of this directory to avoid data loss upon uninstalling the software. Additional paths for connection elements can then be added if needed. Opening the L-clip as an example, you can see in the design tree that a connection feature has been created to define this part as a connection element. Additionally, several configurations exist to represent different sizes. Though the samples are read-only, they can be customized and saved as copies to suit your design requirements. Now, let's take a closer look at how to define a new connection element from scratch. First, ensure that the part that you'd like to turn into a connection element is the active document. Here I have an L-plate to fit some of the corner junctions between our frame structural members. I've set it up with equations to make it easily configurable and added both 2-inch and 3-inch configurations to go along with the default 4-inch configuration. I've also designed holes into this connector so that the structural members can be connected with hardware rather than welded together. Now that I'm ready, I'll begin the process by clicking on Define Connection Element in the Structure System tab of the Command Manager. First, select the placement type. The first option, Generic Connection, is suitable for connection elements that will be connected to one or more sides of structural members, or connection elements that may be used in several different ways. The second option, End Connection, is specifically for connection elements that will only be placed at the axial end of a structural member. This example requires a generic connection. Next, we'll define our primary reference that will be snapped into position using mates once applied. Since my L-plate is going to be placed on top of existing structural members, I'll choose the bottom face as the primary reference. 
Since I expect to align the outside faces of the plate flush with the existing structural members, I'll choose the outside thickness faces as my secondary and tertiary references. In this case, I want to keep the default mate types of coincident, but remember, this can be adjusted depending on your needs and how you anticipate using the connection element. Finally, we'll specify any features we'd like to make available for propagation to the structural member that we apply the element to. Selecting a face of the hole wizard feature I created will ensure that the holes can be propagated to the structural members if desired. Next, in the Dimensions tab of the Property Manager, I can create and name a dimension group, then select any dimensions that I want to make accessible to the user for customization. This might include the overall dimensions, the thickness of the plate, etc. Anything that should not be customizable, like the hole size, for example, should be left out of the selection field here. Only one group is required, but creating multiple dimension groups can be helpful for organization. Once you've selected the necessary dimensions, simply confirm the command and the component is now officially a connection element as designated by the connection feature in the design tree. To edit the behavior of this component as a connection element, simply edit the connection feature and make any adjustments as required. Now, simply creating a component with a connection element feature is not enough for SOLIDWORKS to recognize it and allow you to use it in design. Remember, SOLIDWORKS loads connection element components from a specific directory as designated in file locations. We recommend setting up a new file location directory for any custom connection elements to avoid any potential data loss when upgrading or uninstalling software. I've created a folder for storing custom connection elements on my C drive, which I'll select for my new file location. Any future connection elements can be stored here as well. I should also note that there's a subfolder within this folder named Custom Standard, which will now appear in the Standards dropdown when creating new connection elements. The name of the file, LPlate, will appear in the Type dropdown, while our configuration names will be represented in the Size menu. Finally, it's important to note that as of this release, only one file location is supported for connection elements, meaning we'll need to delete the original file location. But remember, you can always move the sample files to the new directory if you'd like to keep them available. Now I'll simply save my L plate into the custom standard folder and we'll be ready to test out our new connection element. Unlike weldment profiles, you don't have to worry about choosing a specific file type when saving. Saving as a standard part file here is perfectly fine. Back in our structure design, I can now insert a connection element, and there's my newly created L plate in the default 4 inch configuration. Moving to the placement tab, I can see my two named dimension groups available for customization, and in just a few clicks, the connector is properly positioned. Of course, if I'd also like to propagate the holes to the structural members underneath the plate, I can simply select them and cut scope, and just like that, we've created and applied our very own custom connection element in the structure system environment. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure to give it a like and let us know how you've been using structure system tools in the comments. We'd love to hear from you, and we're always looking for good new video ideas. Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We've got new SOLIDWORKS tips and tricks released each and every week, along with a library of hundreds of other existing videos for you to check out to stay updated on the latest and greatest with the software. For more information on the SOLIDWORKS products, training, and other professional services we provide, make sure to check out our website at hawkridgesys.com. And until next time, thanks for watching.